Hello everyone, welcome back to a brand new movie review on the channel today, and today I'm going to be talking about the highly anticipated, if you can say that, uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but I will be talking about Blue Beetle today, DC's newest movie. And this film is finally adapting the character of Blue Beetle, who amongst comic book fans is a pretty big fan favorite. And in this film we follow Jaime Reyes, he's fresh out of college and he's looking for work, he's trying to support his family because they're not doing too great with money right now, but during his search he gets tangled with the wrong people and obtains a super weapon called the Scarab, which attaches itself to Jamie's body and offers him a new arsenal of crazy new weapons and abilities that he must use to protect his family. That's all I'm going to say without spoiling you guys, but this movie is an interesting one to talk about because I myself was extremely excited for this movie. I really like the Blue Beetle character. I've seen him in multiple different things. Uh, I used to watch the Bra Batman Brave and the Bold. He was in that. But even in something more recent like Injustice 2. So I know this character. He's a very much sort of an obscure character where not a whole lot of people are going to instantly look at him and go, oh, it's Blue Beetle, my favorite DC character. Some people will say that, but this character is more for the comic book people who know this character. But I was really excited for this movie when it got announced. I made a video about it when it first got announced and that it, this movie was actually going to happen. And I do want to address a couple things before I get into my main review that some people might say, oh, you missed that, Gavin. You didn't talk about that. So I'm just going to say it right now and I'm just going to address it because I think these are things that people need to hear before they actually go into the movie. And the first thing that I really want to say about this movie that you need to know is that Originally, this movie was going to go straight to a streaming service. This movie originally had no intention of going to theaters. It was going to go to streaming, it was going to go to the HBO Max, or Max as you call it now, and it was just supposed to be a movie they throw on there. But James Gunn saw it and he said, you know what, we can make some money off that, I want to put that into my new DC universe, so let's put it in theaters. Which brings me into my second point, is that a lot of people I think are very confused of what's going on right now with James Gunn's whole new DC universe. A lot of people thought that The Flash would seemingly reset everything, but if you've seen the ending to The Flash, you know that's not technically true. I'm not going to spoil all of that, but this movie is technically the first movie you need to watch in James Gunn's new DC universe. Superman Legacy is the first, I guess you could say, real film. Like, Straight was meant for DCU movie. Like, that movie is meant to start it. But this movie, because it was so successful with uh, all the behind the scenes, they decided to push it in. And since it is so loosely based on anything in the DCEU, they said, well, we can easily just make it seem like it was meant for the DCU all along. This character is going to be in James Gunn's new universe. I just wanted to get it out of the way because I've seen so many people say that, oh, it's connected to Man of Steel. It's not. But just getting away from all that stuff, what did I think about the movie? Well, I think this movie is pretty good. I don't think it's perfect. I don't think it's anywhere near perfect. There are a lot of flaws with this movie that I am going to talk about, but they're all very easy flaws that I am going to address just in one, one big swoop. I just want to talk about it all so I can get to the things that I really like about this movie because I think there, there is a fair amount in this movie that is really, really good, and I actually thought was very well done. But I'm actually going to start off with some of my negatives first, and my biggest negative is that this movie doesn't pull a whole lot of punches. Like, it is emotional, it does have really good emotional moments, but this movie is very much what you've seen before. This movie isn't breaking any new ground, especially for a comic book film or a superhero movie in general. It's really not that different compared to a lot of them. A lot of people make a lot of very clear con connections to a whole bunch of different films coming from DC or Marvel, and that is all very true. This movie is very basic and by the books, but it has a lot of things in it that really elevate it past the point of, I guess you could say, mediocrity. But the very first thing I want to talk about in terms of my first big positive with this movie is that this movie is the definition of a comic book film. And what I mean by that specifically is that a lot of people, I think nowadays, are getting very sick and tired of the same comic book formula, or it's all goofy, it's all wacky, you know, it's all very quippy. And I hate to disappoint you, this movie is most of that. It is supposed to be a very light-hearted movie, but this movie is a comic book film. Not every comic book film needs to be dark and serious, and in some comic book films, it works better than others, but this movie is embraces that. It embraces the fact that it is a comic book film. It's not afraid to get a little bit wacky, you know, and a little bit goofy. Like, they, at one point, they literally ride on a giant ship that's shaped like a beetle with, like, full-on robotic legs and everything. And a very surprising thing, I was actually very happy that they actually explored some of the Blue Beetle legacy and lore, because if you don't know, 
this character is not just kind of a one and done thing. This character is sort of more of like a, I guess you could say a mentor slash like title sort of thing. The name Blue Beetle gets passed down from generation to generation, which is something I didn't really think that they'd actually cover in this movie because like I said, it is kind of goofy and is kind of out there, but I'm actually really happy to say that they really go into depth with that sort of lore of the character and I really liked that because I think Blue Beetle's a really cool character and that title and that legacy has always been a really cool thing in DC lore, so I'm really happy they're exploring it in this movie and hopefully in the future too. And also Zola Menezuerda, I know I probably butchered that name, I'm sorry, I hate accents, but I thought he was genuinely fantastic as Jaime Reyes in this movie. I think he was perfectly cast for this role. I think it's actually a very big breakout role in a way too. I think he was made to play this character. He did such a great job in this movie, and I really loved his performance. He brought a lot of really good emotional moments and really badass moments. I loved his character throughout the entire film. And also, I just gotta say, Blue Beetle suit in this movie is freaking awesome. They take all the best parts about the suit from the comic books and all different media he's been in, and they craft the most perfect looking live action suit. The suit isn't just all CGI, like sure there are some suit up scenes that are CGI, and those look cool too, but I just want to appreciate that this suit is real minus a couple like lights. It's really good. It's a really freaking good suit. But 100%, the best thing I think about this movie is the family dynamic between all of our characters. Because in this movie, the Jaime's family is the main part of the movie. It's a Blue Beetle movie, but it more concerns like every single member of the family as they're kind of just one unit throughout the film. And I just gotta say, their dynamic with one another was incredible. I loved their dynamic throughout the entire movie. It was very wholesome and honestly pretty realistic from what I understand as well to how a real Latino family is in real life and how what they say and what their house looks like. And I just wanted to kind of spotlight that a little bit because I think that's one of the best parts about the movie is that representation and how authentic it feels and how integral it feels for the actual character as well. Like it really makes the character feel so down to earth and just like such a regular human being. And I also do want to say that this is definitely one of DC's nicer looking films. DC kind of has a, I, th I think, a track record of making movies that look pretty awful. Like there really isn't a whole lot of DC movies under the DCEU umbrella that I would say look really, really good. Even though this movie was meant to go straight to streaming, I think it looks better than 95% of every DCEU movie ever made. And it's hilarious to me that this movie, a movie that was meant to go straight to streaming, looks better than one of their biggest movies they've ever put like so much effort into, being The Flash, which looked awful. But don't worry guys, it was, it was, uh, it was meant to look awful. Oh, it was a stylistic choice, which is so stupid. And not just the effects, I thought the choreography for all the action scenes was wonderful as well. There are a lot of really good sequences, like there's one where Blue Beetle uses a buster sword against the villain of the movie, which is from Final Fantasy VII, which is a cool little reference that I thought was really freaking fun. I thought it was a lot of fun. And I love some of the inspiration from Injustice 2. The director has come out and said that a lot of the moves that Blue Beetle uses in this movie are kind of directly based off of or inspired by that game. And coming from a huge fan of that game and playing that character, it was so apparent to me watching the movie. And I love the hand-to-hand -hand fight scenes that all of it was inspired by. I thought it was fantastic. But with all these good things, I still do have one really big issue with this movie. And of course, because I mentioned every single comic book movie ever made, uh, this movie has a villain problem. The villains kind of suck in this movie. They're not really great at all, especially the main villain who is um, the leader of Quark Industries. Yeah, no, she was really bad. She was literally the villain that was there just to basically just say really cliche villain things like, oh, we must do things for the greater good or, oh, we need to do this because it's right, what's, it's right for the world and this world is already so broken. It's just like, shut up. Like, it's like literally every villain ever and has, she has basically like no more motivation besides, oh, we have to make money. We have to make money. We have to protect the world. We have to make money. That's all it is. They literally don't do anything past that. I think that they could have tried to do something a little bit more, but I think that goes too much into spoiler territory, so I'm not going to quite say that. 
but I think that the villain was really bad. Like, the performance was fine, but what she was given was just terrible, in my opinion. But moving on to the second villain, which is Carapax, which I literally just had to search up because that was how forgettable his name was, but I actually thought there was actually quite a bit of potential with that character. They do very late in the movie give him sort of like a tragic backstory, and they kind of give you hints throughout the movie of what he's been through in like little subtle ways and little lines, and I thought that was all very interesting, but when I hit the end of the movie, I I really, really thought that they should have spread out these moments more because in the movie he's very much just the jockey. He's meant there to fight Blue Beetle and be in the last action scene. That's all his point is. And also just a little thing, I do want to say that this movie is very cheesy, especially with the comedy. I didn't think this movie was that funny. There are some funny moments, I won't lie, I thought George Lopez specifically was actually pretty funny in the movie, but there are a lot of moments where it's just very cheesy, just sort of lowbrow humor that isn't awful, but I think if you're not into that kind of humor, you're not going to find it funny and probably not nearly as enjoyable as what they're trying to do. But all in all, that's all I'm going to say about Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle was a perfectly watchable film. It's one of DC's better films. It's not one of their best films, like everyone seems to say on the internet these days. Whenever a DC movie gets slightly good reviews, but this movie is good. It has a good main lead. The family dynamic in the movie is perfect. The CGI is really good, and same with the action scenes. A lot of really cool and I think memorable action scenes. And that's why I'm going to give this movie a very solid 7 out of 10. I highly recommend people to go watch it if they're even slightly interested. Bring your kids. I think they'll have a great time with it. And I just really want this movie to do well, just because this is technically the first new DC movie in James Gunn's universe. So just take that into account. It's not super important to watch this movie, but it's a lot of fun. And I think people are going to have a great time with this one. But anyways, if you like this video, please like and subscribe down below for more content on the channel coming pretty damn soon. And I'm going to see you all in the next one. See ya.